We have our second land from Max. And a second land, including Grove of the Burn Willows, reveals Bob, the Dark Confidant. Brainstorm in response to Dark Confidant. Hoping to pick up a Spell Snare, or if not that, a Swords to Plowshares. Force of Will would probably be fine as well. Again, we see a copy, three copies of Force of Will. Again, a very common response. If you've got four mental missteps, you don't need as many Force of Wills. Land fetched. And Look uh, at that, different Tundras. Yeah, he's got one black border, one white border on the board. Hoping not to be dazed. Says it on his sleeves. Swords to plowshares. One of the best removal spells of all time. Main phase brainstorm, a legacy staple. Waits to see what uh, he wants to piece together from his hand. And lays an island. And then ancestral visions. Uh, Shaheen Sarani walks up to tell us that he has lost in a second draft open. That means he is not going to be a five-time champion this weekend. Because you're terrible at drafts, obviously. <laughs> no. Have a good, uh, good drive. We got a Mox Diamond from um, Scott Robbins. A little bit of fetchy fetch going on. Windswept Heath is going to find. Uh, looks like an old school. Wow. Is it? That is a. Uh, oh, we have these switched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's not that. Not that. Not that. Let's see. An old school plateau. That is a uh, a unlimited plateau. Uh, you can see the alt art on it. Knight of the Reliquary. I'm not sure. Uh, unlimited edition. Is that what that is? That's an unlimited plateau there. Wow, I didn't even realize they had a different, like, an alternate art for that. Jace the Mind Sculptor comes down from Max. I don't even know how much that uh, Unlimited Plateau is worth, but I think it's worth a fair amount more than the revised one. According to uh, to this site, it's about $70, or $70, $75 compared to the $45 or $50 that the uh, revised version is worth. And uh, celebrity judge Jeremy Smith says that it has also really cool art. <laughs> The uh, reasoning for that, as was just stated, you probably couldn't hear it. The original art was lost. They couldn't find it, so they had to commission some new art. Wow. I cannot oh, wow. see what he just cast there. The glare is too big. Um, it's a DCI promotional card of some kind. Can yeah. you make that out? I'm having trouble. He didn't really move it. The glare, the glare it's a two yeah. casting cost spell, whatever it is, and it just got force of weld. Is that a burning wish, perhaps? It might have been a burning wish. Could have been. I, no, it's definitely a burning wish. I can okay. see the lady on it. Okay, good. And follow up with a Sylvan Library. Looks like a Legends Sylvan Library. All right. Ancestral Visions ticks down. Empty-handed Max, but he's got a Jace. And uh, 
He goes from empty hand to four cards in hand. To two cards in a moment. Yeah, he has to put two back, but... Considering... Uh, considering he had no cards in hand at the start of this turn... I predict that Scott Robbins is going to either draw an extra card or two extra cards in this coming turn. Batter Skull. That's a huge moment right there. Hard for cash Max. Batter Skull. Scott untaps. Draw. Activate Sylvan. Three cards there. How many of them do you want? One is free, and it's four life per card after that. There's the germ token being given by the judge. He takes four damage. Taps two, three mana. Maelstrom Pulse on the Jace. That will resolve, being that Max is empty-handed. Fetching to go down to 16. Taiga, two mana left. Could be something like a Tarmogoy, for example. A Tarmogoy would do it. Uh, a burning wish would be useful. What's he wish for? Something good. <laughs> well, it's a burning wish. It's a burning wish. Ooh, and I wonder what uh, he's going to get. Something good, according to my uh, co-commentator. Is that devastating dreams? Uh, I think it may be. Um... I'm confused. Okay, what was that? What could it have been? Pulverize? Uh, uh, no, no, not pulverize. Oh, it could have been pulverize. Yeah, it was pulverize. Okay. Uh, sacrifice two mountains to cast pulverize, mm -hmm. and then destroy all artifacts. That includes the mox. And, and the that batter kills skull, the batter skull. Yeah. The tick down of the ancestral visions. Sylvan Library there. Um, there's a wasteland that hits one of Scott's remaining two lands. Sylvan uh, from Scott, he's got three cards to look at. How many will he take? One is free, four life for everyone beyond that. He takes one for four life, down to 12. Says go. And then finally, after all of this time, Ancestral Visions ticks and there it is. Matt draws three cards off the Visions, one for the turn, and he is stocked up. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Vendillion click or Spellstarter Sprite lock this game down. One of the things I am very impressed by with Scott Robbins here is his, what seems to me, effective and correct use of Sylvan. And what I mean by that is, you don't want to just snap take eight in these situations. You want to make sure that you manage your life total, and you take the cards that you want to take, not just take any card. Land go, land go. Scott Robbins looks at three again. What he's looking for here, did he take two that time? Nope, just took one, I think. What he's looking for here is land, first of all, and then life from the loam as well. Spellstar Sprite comes down on the table. In with the Sprite, down to 11. He, here he takes four, knocking himself down to seven. Mox, does it resolve? He can just Riptide Lab, bring back the Sprite, cast a Sprite if he wanted. That seems like the play to me. Finds a Tundra off of Fetchland. This just in, uh, Canada has crowned a national champion, Mark Anderson. Congratulations to him. Meanwhile, back here in the United States, in Boston. Max returns the spend, uh, Spell Sutter Sprite and replays the Spell Sutter Sprite to counter the Mox Diamond. And then, in for one. On his turn, of course. 
Scott having problems now that he sacrificed uh, sacrificed glands to cast that pulverize. Yeah, that was a big investment to kill um, the, the batter skull. But it may have been his only way to stay in this game. He may have been dead by now if he hadn't done something like that. Or the game may have been far out of reach. There's a wasteland from Scott, so he did find a second land finally. It looks like the Canadian national champion deck was rug pod, by the way. Very interesting. So, uh, brainstorm from Max. In with the spell Stutter Sprite. Tundra is fetched out. Jace. Jace the Mind Sculptor. We have the top eight for the second draft over. All eight players achieved a three and O record in order. Zach Paul, David Weisberg, Michael Bergerock, David Shields, Winlin, Tom Strong, Adam Van Fleet, and Aaron Lewis. With the top eight players, please report to draft table three for the top eight draft. Once again, Zach Paul. Passes the turn. Wasteland, Wasteland on the Riptide Lab. Max is Shields, fine with that. Winman, Tom Strong, Adam Van Fleet, and Aaron Lewis. Good luck to uh, Star City Games Live commentator Zach Hall in the top eight of that. Yeah, he's, uh, he's doing commentary in an upcoming event. Another Mox. How's this one sound? We see a fetch. You just have another spell setter spray. And he does. Doubles his clock. So not only does he uh, he keep Max from uh, from casting the Mox, but uh, I'm sorry, keep Scott from casting the Mox, but he uh, he like Scott used a wasteland on a Riptide Laboratory, so right now he would have had a third land. Riftstone portal from Scott. Wasteland tears up the unlimited plateau. Stoneforge Mystic. Scott scooping it up here in a second, I think. Yeah. There's a Sword of Feast and Famine. Now he knows a Sword of Feast and Famine is in Max's deck, and so he scoops it up. Yeah, it's interesting. Scott, uh, didn't have very much to scoop up. It was a single land there. <laughs> and a Sylvan, and a Sylvan. Oh, that's right. The Sylvan Library. You're right. Okay, so sideboarding for any deck that's a wish deck is always a little bit of a tricky affair. You don't want to take out too many cards from your... Uh, well, your sideboard is eaten up a little bit by wish targets. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we see the um, non-wish targets are three Red Elemental Blasts, four Leyline of the Void, three Angel's Grace. So Red Elemental Blast is almost certainly going to be brought in. And then the other question is, are there any cards in your sideboard, your sorceries, that you don't expect you would wish for, but you might want? And in this case, I don't think there are. Pulverize, Life from the Lone, Retribution of the Meek, Thought Seas, and Devastating Dreams, those are all cards you want to have access to on a wish. So you're going to leave those alone. It's going to be three Red Elemental Blasts coming in, and some cards coming out. The question is what? 